Greetings, hope you all are doing well today, and thanks for uh, hanging out. I have an announcement. Well, it's not really an announcement for those of you that have been following me on Twitter, but for those of you that have not, I am no longer doing videos for Inside Sim Racing. Now, John and I had a discussion, and no hard feelings. I left on my own accord. I thought about this for a little bit and decided my time had just run out and I needed to move on and do something different on my own. So John and I are still friends. Uh, I really got along well with John. I enjoyed the projects that we did together and uh, we will continue to work on future things, but in a much different capacity. He will have me on whenever he would like my input on something with Inside Sim Racing and that's it. So where do I go from here? Well. I'm just starting my own channel. It's I've had this channel. First of all, it was to make uh, comments so people knew who I was and that who I, who was responding to them on the inside sim racing videos that I would do. And then beyond that, I would do little videos here and there. And it's really time to just kind of start my own thing. I think the biggest thing is I will still remain focused on racing games in general. If you know me, my interests lie outside of just sim racing alone. I like all kinds of racing games. In fact, I just like video games in general. I think the focus will remain on reality-based racing games, sim racing, and, you know, games that come close to hitting that mark, like perhaps an F1 2017, but I will definitely venture off into other ones uh, because I like arcade racing games too. Uh, like a need for speed or something like that so that will be the main focus of the channel and I've got I've got my notes here uh, things that I want to accomplish uh, things that I want to do on this channel the most challenging part of this is going to be growing the channel and the community that I'd like to put together because a lot of people aren't gonna know that I left inside sim racing so if you could share that because uh, I can only share it so much so if you could share that for me and when I do a video that you really enjoy if you could share that so that maybe somebody that hasn't known that I've left ISR or is not familiar with my work and maybe they find it and enjoy it that would be great too so I think that's how this channel will grow and hopefully you guys will enjoy what I end up putting out I'm not gonna have access to hardware I won't be able to do that kind of stuff unless you know, like a Thrustmaster or a Fanatic wants to send me something, GT Omega, Next Level, any of those guys want to send me something, I'll be more than happy to review it, but I just don't see that happening. Um, you know, I'm going to be spending all my money right now on buying anything new that new that comes out, like DLC, uh, expansion packs, and new software, new racing games. That's where my money's going to go. So again, looking at my notes here, the first thing I want to do is... The test drive series was kind of my bread and butter on Inside Sim Racing, so I would like to continue doing a form of that. So the segments are going to be called 20 minutes with and then whatever it is. So for example, I'm working on a video out of Project Cars 2, so it'll be 20 minutes with the R32 Skyline at Fuji in Project Cars 2. This type of video will probably be the most prevalent on my channel. It will mainly focus on new material, although I may go back to something older for this series, but primarily it's for new stuff and stuff that I enjoy. I'm not going to cover something that I do not like. The next thing would be reviews. I think reviews are important. The style of review is challenging though because most of these games and sims are a living breathing thing. Some have extremely long tails to them like iRacing and Race Room. Uh, even for instance Automobilista and Assetto Corsa. So where do you define actually making a review? I think taking the Total Biscuit approach, which is a YouTuber if you didn't know, uh, he does a series called WTF. I think taking that idea where I want to put at least 10 hours into something before I give an opinion, I think at 10 hours you get a really good idea of how the game is or the sim is and what it's trying to accomplish. I think Calling it a definitive review is hard, so I think 10 hours width is a good benchmark to shoot for as far as giving an informed opinion. 
And then to follow up with that, I want to do a series called, you know, X days or years later or months later. So for instance, uh, F1 2017 came out, do a review in progress after 10, maybe 15 hours, lay out the groundwork. What does it do well? What does it not do well? And then, you know, maybe I can come back to it in nine months, kind of go through everything that they've gotten up to that that point and do a video that says F1 2017 nine months later or even hit an older title GTR 2 10 years later you know how does that fare things like that so I think there is value in both but I don't think lumping them all into one is effective stuff down the line that I would like to do uh, I, uh, I would love to do a podcast those things to host will cost a little bit of money um, all my money I'm not getting product for free anymore uh, as far as software goes so uh, maybe eventually if I get lucky enough to build up a, a subscriber base then maybe that will change with developers but I don't plan on it anytime soon so everything will have to come out of pocket which would include hosting like on a SoundCloud or Podbean and then it distributes to all other platforms that that does cost something so uh, ads won't be turned on until I hit 10,000 views and then if I can generate enough revenue I can start up a podcast or maybe I'll start a Patreon or donations I'm not sure yet I don't know how that's gonna work I don't know if that's gonna get weird uh, but at some point I would like to do a, a podcast maybe once a month kind of discuss you know the months going on or if I have an idea for a podcast or a topic I'd like to do that as well the next thing I'd like to do is an AMA or a Q&A kind of thing, maybe perhaps monthly and be able to sit down, answer some questions, uh, whatever that might look like, whether it be related to sim racing, hardware, software, uh, my personal racing career, uh, my past with music or what I'm doing now. I think that kind of back and forth lets people understand where I'm coming from more and more. So that when I give an opinion, you have an understanding where that basis of my opinion is coming from. Uh, I'd also like to do videos every once in a while about my music stuff. I'm passionate about music. Uh, I play in bands and create music, so maybe every once in a while. And it'll be labeled. All this stuff will be labeled. So if you're not interested in it, you can skip right over it. But I, again, I would hope that uh, if, if I interest you, then maybe the majority of things that I do will interest you as well. So I'd like to do music stuff, stuff on, you know, stuff on slot cars, uh, other video games. A few times things have been floated to me like doing a reaction video. So I don't know if that's a thing or not, but maybe if you have like a news story about a racing game or sim racing related topic, or maybe even a real world racing topic that you'd like to see me cover, uh, maybe I can do something like that where it's a quick video. You know, we can just talk to the camera and give my thoughts about it and we can have a discussion at some point. And uh, I would like to look into this further, but at some point I'd like to open up a discord server. I think that's a great way to keep involved with the community. I'm not sure if it costs any money. So if it does cost anything to host a server on discord, I have to look into that. I'm in discord with other communities as well as well. And I, I think it's a great way to keep in contact with the community. Uh, even better than YouTube. YouTube's really hard to keep track of the comments. And the best way to get a hold of me really is on Twitter right now. So at strange underscore Billy, you can ask me questions, uh, make comments, and I will be able to see it easier there than YouTube. YouTube moves things around. Even though I can go in and, and click it, it doesn't always say save that. It reverts to like the most popular content or comment. And quite honestly, then sometimes those aren't the nicest thing ever I know I'm going to get asked about live streams the problem is I do not live in an area while I love my house and I love where I live it does not have good internet I'm if I'm lucky five to six down and maybe 0.5 to 0.75 up I rarely I'm supposed to get one up I don't even get that I I think so Doing a live stream is not possible. The, the quality is going to be terrible. And I think I'm with Dan 
from Dan's uh, Racing and Simulations, I hope that's the new channel name, by the way, Dan, is that uh, to do a live stream, I want a certain quality. And maybe I can do something, you know, once a month. It wouldn't be with my rig. It'd be more like a hangout and chat kind of thing. You know, maybe the quality is good enough to do it with my phone and hook up a microphone to it and go get some good cell service. Or I can possibly do it at my work after hours, you know, once a month. Do something for, like, possibly Europe and then do something for North America slash Australia, whatever that would look like. And do, like, a Q&A or just, like, a hangout and chat and talk about maybe the month's uh, hot topics or something. I don't know. Leave, leave, you know, like I said, get a hold of me on Twitter. Give me your thoughts or I will try and read the comments as best as I can to get an idea. Maybe I'll put a poll up on Twitter and uh, we can discuss that. It just it's not possible. It's not possible for me to do a quality stream as much as I would love to with the limitations that I have. And I'm not dragging my rig around. That's that's just not going to work. Maybe someday. I don't know, I'll get enough ad revenue or something that I can go rent a small office and I can move all my stuff over there and it has really good internet and maybe live streaming will be an option then. But uh, until then, I mean, I, I'm paying for the best internet service I can possibly get and it's not great. So the last part is what do I have coming up on the channel? What's in the near future? What am I looking at? Well, <laughs> just in new stuff coming out, we've got a lot going on. We've got uh, the Japanese car pack was just released to everybody so I've got a video coming on that uh, Automobilista just did the Metal Moro AJR already recorded a video on that one as well I want to do the Formula E if it's any good if I like it I'll do a video on that the new Race Room GT3 update I like Race Room a lot so I'm fairly certain that's going to be in there iRacing's got a new update coming with the Global Rally Cross, which I helped with a little bit also the dirt midget so there's something there that to possibly cover a GT Sport has a minor update and then a major update in December so that's something to take a look at uh, and then also a few other things that I wouldn't normally cover on inside sim racing which is kind of why I like going in this direction I played you know about 14 hours of need for speed payback I've got some definitely got some thoughts on that VRC Pro, which is the remote control simulator for a lot of the pros use. Uh, they've released some new content. I'd like to go over that. Dirtworks Designs, which is a modding group for R-Factor. They deal with dirt oval stuff. They've just released a few tracks, uh, redid a bunch of their other tracks and have released. Well, they released a mod, a modified, realized there was an issue with it. Uh, so they're reworking it and going to re-release it. I'd like to cover that as well. And then also, I'd like to do a Game of the Year awards in the racing genre all on its own. There's plenty of games that came out this year, and then there's plenty of add-ons that came out for a lot of the titles as well. And I'd like to cover those and give kudos where I think it's applicable. This might be in conjunction with John on ISR, or it might be on my own. Uh, we're still working that out, but... You know, maybe the end of the year or the beginning of 2018. That's something that I've always wanted to do that just we haven't been able to do. So that's, again, that's something that I'd like to bring to the forefront. Beyond that, I'd like to show off some stuff in multiplayer like online racing. I'd also like to go over some old games and what made them great. And maybe what made them slightly not so great. You know, I've got a collection that goes clear back to the NES. I have almost every platform. The only thing I'm short on is old PC games. Uh, I have an old PC, but I'm not quite sure how to capture video out of that and make it run well, uh, especially with the peripherals that I have. So that might be a challenge, uh, but I'd like to cover older PC racing titles as well. Again, the best way to get a hold of me is Strange underscore Billy on Twitter. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Strange. You guys have been great. I will catch you in the next video.